Although its name is often suggestive of something bad, cholesterol is not a poison and is not a disease. It is a vital molecule that performs key structural and regulatory functions in our body. Cholesterol is the most important sterol in our body. By looking at its structure, you can tell that it's quite different from triglycerides and phospholipids. It's still made of the same stuff, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but now they are arranged in a completely different way. And in particular, they form four carbon rings, which is distinctive of all sterols. A thing to remember about cholesterol is that it's exclusively an animal molecule. For this reason, it is only present in animal foods. You will never find any cholesterol in vegetable food. So, for example, there is no cholesterol at all in olive oil or in peanut butter. Cholesterol is nutritionally non-essential because our cells can make it starting from fatty acids or glucose. So, just like for phospholipids, we do not need to worry about getting enough cholesterol from food. Our body can make all the cholesterol it needs. However, since it's present in animal food and we can absorb it, we can also get some of our cholesterol from food already made. About two-thirds of our body cholesterol is made by our own cells. The remaining one-third comes directly from food. So why is cholesterol important? First of all, it is a structural molecule. It's an important component of the structure of our cell membranes and gives them rigidity to balance the fluidity contributed by phospholipids. Another important structural function of cholesterol is as constituent of the myelin sheath that protects our nerves and allows proper signal transmission. Then it's the starting material that our liver uses to build bile salts, which we need to emulsify lipids during fat digestion. It is also a precursor of vitamin D. We can get some vitamin D directly from food, but we can also build it ourselves in our skin as long as we're exposed to sunlight. But to do that, we have to have cholesterol as starting material. Cholesterol is also the precursor of many hormones that are called steroid hormones, such as the sexual hormones like testosterone or estrogens and cortisol involved in our chronic stress response. If cholesterol does so many important things, why does it have a bad reputation? An old nutritional axiom stated that dietary cholesterol increases blood cholesterol, which in turn increases cardiovascular risk. However, we know today that this does not hold true. High blood cholesterol will indeed increase cardiovascular risk, so much so that there is a direct correlation between plasma cholesterol levels and incidence of coronary heart disease. However, a high intake of dietary cholesterol will hardly ever increase blood cholesterol in a significant way. It's not cholesterol that raises cholesterol. A high intake of saturated fats, trans fats, and sugar will raise blood cholesterol much more than eating a lot of cholesterol-rich foods, like eggs. Soon you will learn why. For now, just note that the only place where we do not want too much cholesterol is our bloodstream, because if it stays there and has nowhere else to go, it ends up depositing in the walls of our arteries, promoting atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. So remember, cholesterol is dangerous only when it is in our bloodstream. But once it gets inside our cells, it does no harm anymore and instead is a very useful molecule. The other important point to remember is that there is only a weak correlation between cholesterol in food and blood cholesterol levels. Cholesterol absorption is limited and not very efficient. Only about half of dietary cholesterol is absorbed, and if our intake exceeds 500 mg, it plateaus, meaning our gut stops absorbing it. Furthermore, if dietary cholesterol increases, multiple homeostatic mechanisms will decrease endogenous cholesterol production and increase cholesterol excretion via the bile. As a result of all this, substantial variations of cholesterol intake induce only minimal fluctuations in blood cholesterol. In about 15% of the population, however, which carries a particular polymorphism for apoprotein E, these homeostatic mechanisms work less efficiently, and variations in blood cholesterol are less stable. Every cell in our body is capable of cholesterol synthesis for its own use, while the liver can make cholesterol and send it around in the circulation for other cells to use. The starting material is acetylcoenzyme A, 
which is usually readily available in every cell and can come from fatty acids, glucose, and some amino acids. The metabolic pathway leading to cholesterol production is non-reversible. In other words, our body can make cholesterol but cannot destroy it, converting it back to acetyl coenzyme A to be used for other things. The key regulator of the cholesterol synthesis pathway is an enzyme called hydroxymethyl glutamyl coenzyme A reductase. From now on, we will refer to it as the cholesterol enzyme. This enzyme can be induced so that a lot of cholesterol is made or inhibited so that cholesterol synthesis slows down. An important class of cholesterol-lowering medication, statins, act precisely by inhibiting this enzyme. Some short-chain fatty acids derived from intestinal fermentation of fiber, like butyric acid, have a similar effect, and this is one of the reasons why dietary fiber can lower blood cholesterol levels. Conversely, other dietary factors can induce the cholesterol enzyme and therefore raise blood cholesterol levels by promoting its endogenous synthesis. High dietary fat, and in particular saturated and trans fat, depresses endogenous synthesis of fatty acids, thus making more acetyl coenzyme A available to be used for other purposes, including cholesterol formation. Another inducer of the cholesterol enzyme is insulin, which is why an excess of high glycemic index foods, such as simple sugar and refined grains, can have a detrimental effect on blood cholesterol. Ironically, four slices of white bread can end up raising blood cholesterol much more than four eggs. Plant sterols like beta-cetosterol, which is the most abundant, are structurally similar to cholesterol, but we normally cannot absorb them, so they are not considered nutrients and we could see them as a particular type of fiber. But plant sterols have a potentially important extra nutritional function in our diet, in that they interfere with the absorption of cholesterol in our gastrointestinal tract. In individuals with problem of high cholesterol in the blood, a moderate intake of about 2 grams of plant sterols every day has been shown to lower blood cholesterol. Inhibiting intestinal cholesterol absorption is a very effective strategy, not so much because it lowers absorption of dietary cholesterol, which we already know is only marginally relevant, but above all because it prevents recycling of bile salts, forcing the liver to build new ones with significant consumption of blood cholesterol. Nuts and seeds Wheat germ, oat bran, and legumes are good sources of plant sterols. However, the recommended intake of 2 grams for controlling high blood cholesterol can only be achieved through sterile fortified foods, such as yogurts, margarines, or juices. Marine sterols that are especially abundant in shellfish are also not absorbed and they act in a similar way to plant sterols.